So today I'm going to, to introduce you one of the research projects we performed in Systematica during the, the, the first month of the COVID-19 pandemic. And Systematica is a transport planning and mobility consultancy based in Milan, and we have our own internal research unit, which is Transport Transport. And during the pandemic, the, the unit was fully dedicated to several research activities related to the impact of the pandemic on urban mobility. And as you can see, the booklet Shifting Paradigm, uh, which is fully available online, you can find many different projects. And today I want to show you one of these projects. So we usually perform uh, urban mobility studies to to investigate the needs of specific targeted users, for example, elderly women and children. We study a lot of walkability and during the pandemic, we, we use the standard metrics and the innovative tools we, we, we adopt for our research to understand again, the impact of the, of the pandemic. And so we produce, for example, uh, the Milan sidewalk map, which was aimed at assessing the possibility for pedestrians to walk safely and in a comfortable manner, also considering the, the restriction um, designed by the local government. And also we use CCTV camera to, to estimate the impact of the pandemic on pedestrian and vehicular flow. But for today, I want to, 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 to focus on the use of Wi-Fi sensor data. So we, this is a research in collaboration with uh, Freeluna which is one of the largest Wi-Fi service provider in Italy. And the, all the results of the research have been recently published in the Journal of Land Use, Mobility and Environment. So everything is online and feel free to contact me if you if there's something specifically interesting, that you're interested in some part of the research and in the data set. So the, the very general introduction is that the, we, we do have uh, different kind of sensors which could be used to estimate the mobility and urban mobility and also pedestrian uh, pedestrian dynamics in the city and during the conference we see different uh, different approaches to this topic uh, and in this case we wanted to to take advantage of uh, an already present Wi-Fi network hotspots network in the city of Milan so we are now looking we were looking at the, the city at a very large scale uh, scenario and Wi-Fi technologies has some advantage in collecting data, low cost technology, also the maintenance of the sensor uh, compared to cameras is is uh, advantageous. But also we, we know that Wi-Fi uh, data has some limitation in terms of also because we, the, I mean, we produce aggregate data. So it's not possible to differentiate in between different, different flows within the, the traffic dynamic. And the, the, the scenario of investigation, again, was the, was the pandemic. And Milan and the Lombardy regions was one of the most affected regions in the EU. Uh, so everyone knows that the, the, the very first month in the 2020 was uh, dramatic here. And the, all the data uh, which were collected at that time highlight that the, I mean, the, also the mid and long-term effect of the pandemic on urban mobility. So for example, the massive use of private, um, private vehicle means. So we were looking at this kind of data to, to highlight a, any significant mobility patterns in the city. Also considering the, I mean, the, let's say the 15 minute city as a very general framework for this research. So the data we used uh, uh, is composed of uh, around 100 million of mobile devices which were detected during a seven month period of data collection. On the right side of the slide, you can see the animation of the, uh, of the results of the data collection phase. So each bar corresponds to the position of a Wi-Fi sensor. And we had plans of research questions, I mean, which were devoted for, for the research, but the, the very first one is effective. Uh, the use of Wi-Fi technology is effective to, to, to study uh, city dynamics. And it was possible to quantify the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on uh, urban mobility. And then we start correla correlating among them time variant data related to traffic volumes with the density distribution of time invariant data uh, related to the city, the characteristics of the city. And so we use, uh, we combine uh, the, the data from the Wi-Fi sensors with some other open data uh, related to land characteristics, building typologies, green areas and amenities, and also public transport service availability. 
so the 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 main idea was to uh, to to analyze this data, consider also the time series of the different phases related to the pandemic. So from the table, you can see the phase zero is related to the pre-COVID period, and then we we have uh, we have different kind of phases related to the uh, to the to the pandemic itself. So the, so the local and national. Uh, restriction measurements which took place at that time and for the extraction of the land mobility data we built up a buffer around each sensor so the the radius of the sensor is about 80 meters but then we built a larger buffer composed of other 20 100 meters which was the the distance uh, the travel distance allowed from place of residence during the the lockdown phases So again, first we, we look at the time series of data and as you can see it was pretty uh, easy to recognize uh, the, 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 the trend in data considering the, the pre-COVID period from the 1st of January to the, the, the 23rd of February. And then we start mapping uh, phase zero, which is let's say the, the, let's say the beginning of the pandemic, but not already regulated by local and national governments. And then phase one, which is the proper lockdown, phase two and phase three. Uh, we perform a series of independent sample t-tests to recognize the significance of the difference in between of these phases. And also we, uh, we smooth short-term fluctuations of data to highlight also long-term trends of data with uh, trend analysis. Here by an, uh, an analysis regarding the, the day and hourly uh, analysis of the data. So we were looking at the circadian rhythm uh, of the city during the pre-COVID period and again phase zero, one, two, and three. And you can see, for example, that the, the phase zero, the proper lockdown was characterized by an overall decrease of traffic volumes as all. Well. And then uh, the phase one and phase two and three were characterized instead by a flattened temporal distribution of values. So back to normal, uh, let's say normal, it was not, but I mean back to uneasiness in the uh, lockdown measurement. Then we look at mobility profiles during the weekday and the weekend. Uh, it was not really possible to, to recognize precise mobility pattern because all the dynamics in the city and urban mobility uh, was uh, dramatically influenced by the, the impact of the COVID pandemic. But still, it, I mean, this kind of data was really useful also for uh, to estimate the mid and long term effect of the pandemic. Then we, we start uh, correlating data. So again, the, the, the data regarding uh, uh, the, the number of mobile devices, devices detected uh, in the area of action of each sensor with the characteristics of the city. So on the left, on the right, you can see uh, some example of the extraction of the land and mobility data. And we start correlating uh, uh, this kind of this, this data set and also considering the, the relative position in the city. So using spatial autocorrelation statistics. And the interesting uh, results uh, were also considering that uh, the concentration, for example, of residential building and department store were uh, significant and positive with traffic data, uh, considering all the phases of the lockdown, also considering the containment measurement. And then the, the last results of the research was to propose a model which could highlight the, posi the, the best position for a new sensor in the city. So focusing on the pre-COVID period, uh, the results of the correlation analysis performed before uh, was uh, useful to estimate uh, the, the area of the city where the future data collection activity could, uh, and more extensive data collection activity could be useful to, to estimate and to study the activities in the city. So in conclusion, the, the use of Wi-Fi data for us was truly interesting and it, it's confirmed to be effective for uh, the understanding of the of human mobility. And we do combine these techniques for data collection with other tools 
for example, computer-based, agent-based simulation, but also uh, big data, social media data from from Twitter, for example. And we we do use this data for mapping through GIS and the 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 step forward for the use of this data is to have a real time application. So to collect this data in real time and to provide to the stakeholders and the end users some estimation of the of the activity patterns in the city. So thank you for your attention and I'm available for a for any question. Thank you, Andrea. What a fascinating breakdown of the activity during Milan and what a wild time period, January 2020 to July 2020. Um, so thank you for sharing that. We definitely have time uh, for at least one or two questions from the chat. So we'll start here. Have there been or are there ways these insights are being used to determine accessibility or equity in Milan? Sorry, can, can you repeat the second part of the question? Yeah, so I'll just repeat the whole thing. Have there been yeah. any ways these insights are being used to determine accessibility or equity in Milan? Yeah, I mean, the this kind of data was uh, analyzed considering the, the opening and the, the closing of each kind of service, topology of service, which was mapped during the entire period. So it was also useful to, I mean, to, to give some evidence to the 15 minute city concept, which was really uh, sexy at that time. But I mean, the point was that it was uh, possible to, to see the dynamic in the city also considering, for example, that also even during the, the very first lockdown measure, all the supermarkets were open and available for accessible for the users. So this kind of dynamics was, uh, was uh, recognizable for data. Absolutely. Thank you so much again for sharing your presentation with us, Andrea. Um, this has been.